quite a lot's happened since yesterday's Jao Polinia bid, which was rejected by Fulham. In fact, it was actually 45 million and not 40 million. Uh, yesterday's video, even though I just had the news, was primarily about Tim Steiton, about David Moyes, about us be building a sort of higher age profile. And, and I, it was, was more about my frustration with us appointing a director of football and him not being allowed to do his work, I think, than it was a video about uh, about Jao Polinia. We'll get a little bit more uh, into that today and exactly what he is. Uh, we've had a £45 million bid rejected for him, as I just said. There's been a, a few other bits of news as well since I did that video. Uh, so it appears that the, the club have, have leaked that they are not interested in Harvey Barnes. That's one of the things <laughs> Harry Maguire has indicated that he's not ready to join West Ham. He's not, not ready. He doesn't want to join West Ham. Uh, Amrabat, if you, if you know Amrabat, Moroccan uh, midfielder, obviously played for Fiorentina when we played them uh, in the final. Uh, he said he doesn't want to come to West Ham as well. Uh, there's a little bit of Tom, um, Scott McTominay stuff. I mean, you know, quite a lot, quite a lot has happened. But then there's stronger links with Jonathan Tart, which has obviously come off the back of Harry Maguire saying he doesn't want to come to West Ham. So there's quite a lot to deal with today. Um, I particularly do want to deal with the Harry Maguire stuff as well, actually, because I mentioned the other day in the video that I thought I thought he sort of had an entitled air about him. And I, and I really do think that's that's the case. I, look, some players, I think, you're just not in a position to be picking and choosing. And, and I think maybe Harry Maguire is one of them. There's certain others, look, they've got the choice to go to other clubs, Champions League clubs, and do you know do better things in their career, then, then fair enough. But I think if... What I believe to be said is true, and Harry Maguire's looking down his nose at West Ham. Um, yeah, probably not. Probably not great. You know, West Ham's a good club to be at at the moment. As if you're a player like Harry Maguire trying to resurrect your career, we're we're in Europe. Um, you've got a manager who's probably going to play to your strengths as well. Oh, I don't know. Bit bit of an odd one. Um, so yeah, quite a lot to unpack today in terms of the West Ham news. None of it particularly exciting. Uh, before I go any further, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, which is the best place to keep up to date with the West Ham news. The second best place to keep up to date with the West Ham news after here, of course. Now, the One Football app is fantastic. It's free. And the best thing about it is you can tailor it to suit your own needs. So it only gives you the information on the football clubs and the tournaments and the players that you want to hear about. So, don't want to hear about Declan Rice anymore? No problem. You just tell the app that you're only interested in West Ham stuff, maybe, I don't know, maybe the Europa League, something like that, and it will search around the internet and the newspapers, cherry picking all the stories it knows you want to hear, it delivers them to your phone. It really is a fantastic app, and I'll tell you what, it comes into its own on match days with the late, with the starting lineups, and, and all, all the stuff you need to know, be it injuries, transfers, gossip, and whatever else. Best of all, as I said, it's free. Please use the link below, and I know you've come from Hammers Chat. Okay, let's go with Polinia first. 45 million, I don't, I don't want us to be bidding any more than 45 million. I didn't want us to bid 45 million pound for the player. Just, just to quantify, just to clarify, I think he's a good player. He was by far the best tackler in the Premier League last season. My, my problems are absolutely about his age and about his speed. I just find it a good time for reasons I explained yesterday. I'm not going to labour the point for us to reinvent what we're doing and maybe get some some younger players and particularly some faster players into the team. Um, so I don't have a problem with his ability as a defensive midfielder. He might even be the best one in the Premier League statistically last season. It suggests he was. I'd rather go and sign Alvarez from Ajax. I really would. Um, I still think there's other players, but Alvarez is 25 rather than 28. Um... Forty-five million seems a lot of the Declan Rice money. I mean, it's pretty much half. Fair enough to say that, isn't it? Pretty much half the money. And if they're saying no, I hope we don't go back in. I don't want us to go back with another bid for Polinia because I tell you what, I was worried anyway. If we go back in with a, I don't know, 50, 55, 55 million pound bid, something like that, what you know, not good, not at all. I would hope there's a list of targets. I'm hoping we get a lucky escape from that and actually we're sort of stopped from bidding anymore because Fulham's valuation is too high and Fulham's valuation can be as high as they want. If they don't want to sell the player, good. I, I, I hope that's it. I, good for them. I hope they keep him. hope he stays. Um, I mean, to be fair to Fulham, I've got no dislike for Fulham at all. You know, good luck to them. Um, I think they've got a bit of a they got more to worry about than West Ham at the moment with the way that, you know, the Saudi money is looking like it's, you know, coming in and Mitrovic, big player for them. And 
you know, he's, he's done well there, Silva, and Fulham have done well. And it just looks like this money's going to come in. They're going to completely undermine what the manager's done. And, the man done. and as a result, the manager might not be signing a new contract. Anyway, this is not, this is not Fulham chat. What they, it's not cottage. It's not cottage in. Cottage in with Gonzo. Hey, hey, you know what I mean? Um, anyway. Uh, Harry Maguire, I'm hoping there's another lucky escape there. Let me just read these bits to you, by the way, about Harry Maguire. Uh, excuse me, quick glasses pit stop there. The quote I'm going to give you now is from a high-ranking source at West Ham United. I'm sure there's easier ways to say that. The West Ham United source said, Maguire is unready to take a pay cut and he's not keen to leave Manchester United for West Ham at this stage of his career. Are you joking or what? This stage of his career? How old does he think he is? Uh, the, the guy is not playing. The guy cannot get into Manchester United's team. I'm telling you, he's in no position to be looking down his nose at West Ham. I mentioned it yesterday. I mentioned it at the start of the video. I think, I think he's, I think he's hard work, basically. I really do. I think he's got a self-inflated sense of self-worth. I think he still thinks he's the, the rampaging England defender who is worth 80 million. The times have changed. A lot of water has passed under the bridge since then. He's not getting in the team. He's had some pretty horrendous performances as well. And I do think there's an air of entitlement about him. I think he's a little bit arrogant, truth be known. And I, and I don't say this now. That I know not everybody watches every video, but I mentioned this on a video a couple of years ago and it happened. And if you remember it, a fair play. Now, here's the, here's the situation. Harry, <laughs> Harry Maguire was getting a load of stick online because he was crap. He'd been crap, right? And what happened was Gareth Southgate continued to pick him for England. And there was a lot of talk about haters, the haters, right? Harry Maguire scored a goal for England and then he went running on this, this long um, celebration. As I remember rightly, he slid on his knees. He started giving it all this, which is obviously shush to the haters. When asked afterwards why he did that, he said, it's because I hate the haters. I answered the haters. And I, I said this at the time. I don't think he did. I don't think anybody was questioning his ability to score a goal from a corner. I don't think he did answer the haters. I, I think the haters were talking about his defending, which had become really, really ropey. And I just found it an odd thing to say at the time. And he's got in a few kerfuffles, a um, few predicaments that he maybe didn't want to do. And I just thought, what happened yesterday when he put out a statement about losing the captaincy. Everyone else seems to lose a captaincy and just deal with it, right? He seemed to be mortally wounded by losing the captaincy, which I found a bit of a worry. And then he puts out a public statement praising Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The trouble is when, when it requires everybody to be stupid not to see through what he's done. Every, it, nobody's stupid. Everyone knows what he's done. It's not in praising Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Everyone sees it for what it is. He's criticising Ten Hag. There's so much baggage there. There's so much entitlement. Good luck to him. Personally, I am pleased. I think he would have worked in David Moyes' system. I think David Moyes probably saw him as Craig Dawson 2.0 or whatever in terms of Ward Prowse swinging over a free kick and Maguire heading it in. He's, you know, but I'll tell you what, I am not disappointed about that at all. Harvey Barnes. Let's, let's deal with Harvey Barnes quickly. West Ham have no interest in signing Harvey Barnes, apparently. I don't know if that's true. It, it doesn't seem like it's true. I think the quote was, again, from a high place source at West Ham. I'll find this for you now. There's no interest in Barnes. It's not a position we desperately need this time. We have bigger priorities. Um, I guess that's true. I guess we need midfielders and we'd probably need a striker before we did that. But you can't rely on Cornet. Um, a lot of people say when we've been linked to Barnes, what about Sai Ben Rama? You, you, you just don't go through the season with 11 players. Our biggest problem, uh, I think, have come when we've not had anyone good enough to be able to rotate. So I think bringing Barnes in would have been a good thing. But I do think a lot of these rumours that I try not to get too upset about because I, I often think maybe we were never in for them. So you know what? I've one of two things is, is, is true. I thought either... The statement is right and there is no interest in Barnes or it's a smoke screen, and we actually are. Now this takes us to the story that I, I mentioned, I've mentioned a few times about Newcastle United and this need for them to sell for financial fair play. And I've said all along, if Newcastle need to spend money, they'll spend money. They can be very, very creative. They can bend the rules. They can tie solicitors up in years like Man City have. 
if they need to. I think we might have found the answer. I don't even know if they're interested in Harvey Barnes, whether they are, whether they aren't. Forget Harvey Barnes for a second. Just new, if Newcastle want to spend money, they'll spend money. Is the big one, and it's been paving the way from it. There is interest in Alan Sam Maximum, who I like. I really enjoy watching that player, to be honest with you. Um, from Saudi Arabia. Oh, I bet there bloody is. I bet there is. And I tell you what, I bet Alan Sam Maximum does not leave Newcastle for Saudi Arabia for tuppence either. I know nobody is, but it will be a. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I think this is a really, really clever way for Newcastle to boost their income. Man City got got their fingers burnt, really, didn't they? Because I think, uh, allegedly, not, not Man City, let's say there was an imaginary club um, that, that were doing it, then they, they might they might falsify some sponsorship, let's put it that way. Uh, Newcastle are not doing that. Newcastle, I think, have already legitimised the model, which is Saudi Arabia are building this league so they can go and buy Premier League players. Or not just Premier League players, but Benzema or whatever. They can go and sign... These wonderful players. Ronaldo, of course, is over there. Um, so it's not going to look out of place. If they go and bid a whopping great bid for Alan Sam Maximum, it's not going to look out of place at all. Of course, it's just going to boost um, Newcastle United's balance sheet and Newcastle United can go out there and, and spend. I would not be surprised at all if the Saudi Arabian club pay in excess of what Alan Sam Maximum is worth. Uh, so I think that is going to be really, really interesting. Uh, well, one thing I am a little bit disappointed about, by the way, is um, you remember Kirkes, who we played uh, for AZ Altmar? And he played against us in the, in the second leg. Brilliant player. We, we, we spoke a lot about him in the build-up shows and, and when we did sort of like reviews and stuff like that. I thought he was absolutely superb. I heard lots of good things about him. Uh, before the game, um, I'd seen lots of clips and footage of him. And I've got to say, when we played against Altmar, he did not disappoint. I thought he was sensational. That absolutely was the type of player I'd like us to sign. I've not mentioned him in, in recent days, because quite frankly, I, I forgot about it. But uh, he's a player that I do really like. And to see him go to Bournemouth, wh why aren't we in for these players? I find it very, very frustrating. Anyway, sorry. That was yesterday's video, the, the Stiden video and all the rest of it. Um... Scott McTominay, I, I just don't know. Who, who knows? Scott McTominay was meant to be part of a £60 million deal, which included Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire doesn't come now. Honestly, I, do you know what? I'm going to say it again. I know I've already covered it in this video. You got the impression, well, I did. Let's not say you. I'm not going to speak for you. I'll speak for me. I got the impression that Jesse Lingard thought he was too good for West Ham. That's why he didn't come in the end. I'm too good for West Ham. Um, Penny for his faults after we won that trophy, and I've said it before. But I'm getting that thing, that, that same sort of... Um, vibe with uh with Maguire actually I think West Ham are beneath him and do you know what mate you know fair enough jog on uh quite frankly you know not interested the Polini one is different I do think you know we are interested I think he probably would want to well why wouldn't he why wouldn't he want to play in European competition uh, I think there's you know there's there's a load of we often get a lot of comments why would anyone want to come and play for David Moyes and I think it's a blanket statement and I I, I dismiss it I, abs absolutely, I did miss, dismiss it. Why would, why would Coutinho want to come and play for David Moyes? I'll tell you what, I would agree with you. Um, but it's like saying, why would Harry Maguire want Harry Maguire should go and play for David Moyes. Polinia would do well playing for David Moyes. So it's not like nobody. There's certain players who would thrive in a David Moyes' system. You know, absolutely no doubt about it. That's why I don't get, I've said it before, I don't get the um, the, su the suggestion from Antonio that he's frustrated with David Moyes' system. He's perfect. David Moyes is perfect for Antonio, as I've mentioned on many, many occasions. David Moyes is the pivotal, crucial manager in Antonio's career. Honestly, Antonio should be worshipping at the altar of David Moyes, quite frankly, because he's done loads for him. So there are players that would want to sign for David Moyes. There are players that would thrive under David Moyes. And I'm pretty sure Polina would be one of them. As, as I've said... <laughs> I I'd, I'd sort of hope we don't, but um, I, I do look at Polina differently to how I look at, at Harry Maguire. Um, I don't look at I don't think Polina's got an attitude problem or anything like that. I, I think I think you know to coin a phrase, I think he dodged a bullet really with Harry Maguire there if he doesn't want to come. So yeah, sort of mixed mixture of all of them. Pleased to miss out on Harry Maguire. Um, you know, disappointed to miss out on Harvey Barnes. I mean, it's going to run and run. It's you know, it's, it was felt like what, three or four hours ago was at the point of recording this where I did the uh, Stryden video. So this news is changing. And one final thing. Is it Columba? I think it's Columba that says that. And one final thing. I'd actually switched off during the video 
and then I'd switched off the lights and, and the camera stuff and all the rest of it. And I read, read, read me, uh, me Patreon WhatsApp group. And uh, so thank you to, uh, to Farmer Chris, Ryan Snell and Andy Walsh. Uh, basically, there's a tweet from Jacob Steinberg, uh, which says, interest from Al Etif Etifac, is that how you say it? Al Etifac in Mikel Antonio, not an advanced stage yet, unclear if they can pick up a fee for Antonio and West Ham are unlikely to let him go on a free transfer. But Antonio is in the final year of his deal and he is open to leaving West Ham in brackets, not alone there. Honestly, in brackets, I don't know if you can see that, not alone there. So a Saudi club have come in for Mikel Antonio. It's not advanced. Um, I like the bit where it says, I'm not, not, I'm unsure if they can pay a fee. Oh, well, they can pay a fee, all right. We discussed that earlier on in the video. West Ham unlikely to let him go on a free transfer. He's in the final year of his deal and he's open. To, we knew he was open to leaving West Ham. He's open to leaving West Ham. He's not, it's almost like, you know, not on his own. It's almost like he's open to leaving West Ham. Not on his own there. It's, it's, it's a tone of voice to it, I think. Anyway, there you go. Anyway, that's just the end of this video. That will give us something else to discuss. This video's gone on for far too long. Um, we've got a game to prepare for.